Hey friends, Lori Hart, I'm back to do my September reading wrap up. I thought my September reading up wrap up was only going to be one part because I was really struggling to read when I started back to work, but I wound up reading more books than I thought I was going to. So we're going to split this in two parts. So you'll see part today, which is a Tuesday and you'll see the other part on Thursday. So yeah, let's get into it. So I started off the month trying to like wrap up summer, get ready for fall. And I think that was a good idea. And then when I switched to fall reads, all it all fell apart. But um, before I went back to work, I was able to read three books pretty much the day before I went back to work. One was Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is her second Ballinger sister book, and I haven't read her first book in the series, but I thought this one was cute. It was a second chance romance. It was like Friends Tomorrow, I would say, um, and I enjoyed it. Um, I think that Fox and Hannah was fun. It took place in like a small town. I don't think the small town was like it wasn't like how I like small town romances because the small town wasn't really a character in the story but I think I like this Tessa Bailey better than her previous one I think that it was a slow burn story which I really enjoyed um I also just like the presence of the music industry in this story because she was filming a movie in this small town I like that you also saw the other characters like you got to see Piper and Brendan I think his name was it was a fun read it was four stars. Um, was it, is it like a new favorite of mine? No, but I liked it and it might convince me. Sorry, you're going to see my puppy. Um, I guess he, um, but you, I enjoyed it more than my killer vacation for sure. Like I definitely liked it more than that. I gave it four stars and I would check out more by this author in the future for sure. Um, and then the next book that I picked up Oh my god, my puppy. Um, was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. And I actually read half of this physically. As you could see, I started to tab it. And then I wound up picking up the audiobook from Libo FM. Again, I thought this one was a fun bookish romance. This had a small town element. And I think it did a little bit better than Hook, Line, and Sinker. But it was fun. It was enjoyable. You follow this main character, Nora, and she's like the opposite of what a book is. Like, you go to a small town and your whole life changes. That's not her life. She works in publishing. Her man, oh god, what's his name? Charlie also works in publishing. They had like a meet, hate a year, a couple of years before because she's working with this author that, you know, um, she wants him to work with and things didn't work out. But they all, but, but they both get stuck in this small town for the summer. It was enjoyable. I liked it. I gave it probably like 4.5 stars. I think that it was a fun buckish romance. It was enjoyable. I really liked the sister dynamic in this story. It was a, like a fun twist on a small town story because it just was, it, it was a fun twist. The romance was definitely hate to more. I liked how the small town had a solid element to it. I enjoyed it. Um, I is my first Emily Henry book. It definitely will not be my last Emily Henry book. And I really did like, um, you know, the sister dynamics in the story. So I think gave a five on Goodreads. I would probably have given it like 4.5 stars, but I enjoyed it. And the audiobook was a fun read. Sorry, my battery died, which I'm still getting used to. Um, but I did wind up starting, um, actually I read an audiobook and that is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I will attach a photo somewhere over here. Um, probably before or after this clip. Um, this is the second book that I've read by Ashley Winstead. I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and I was not the biggest fan, but I'm pleased to report this was a very different reading experience and we're gonna chat about it. I will admit I like this book a lot better and I think it was mostly because of the characters were more likable. Um, and when I got to the end of the bus, this <coughs> book it reminds me a ton of the Nexium case that's you know with Allison Mack and Keith Raniere the Vow documentary so all that stuff was very in my head when I was reading it um and if you don't know much about that I would not look into it until after because I feel like a couple of the reveals at the end that I didn't really notice might be spoiled but I love this book it was fast paced it was quick it was like dark it was a dark story 
but just very quick storytelling. You basically follow this girl that's listening to a podcast as like true crime podcast that we all do. I know I do. I listen to a couple of them. And she's listening to a case about her best friend because her best friend has been found dead. And it's hosted by someone from her past. And they wind up teaming up to solve this girl's murder. Many people think it's suicide. She doesn't. And as she's teaming up with him to figure out what's happening, she's also diving into her past when her and her couple of best friends they joined a cult. And it's just very fascinating. There is a podcast element. It's very dark, very, very twisted, but very, very compelling. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars, and I definitely want to check out more by this author in the future. I know she has a romance book that I haven't checked out yet, which is also political from what I from what I heard. Um, but yeah. So the next audiobook that I read, this is where my reading sort of fell down the hole. Like I just, I couldn't focus on anything like for pretty much two weeks. I was picking up stuff and I just put everything down. So um, I did wind up finishing The Dangerous Collaboration by Diana Rayburn, which I think this is the third or the fourth Veronica Speedwell book. And I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. Here is a photo wherever it is on the screen. Still getting used to my new editing software. But this one definitely connected more to the two main characters' past. There is still the sexual tension. Veronica Speedwell is basically a adventurer, and her and her partner in crime wind up solving these crimes as they globe trot. And it's just a fun time. I love Regency romance, so it has a nice balance of that. But Veronica Speedwell reminds me of like a Sherlock Holmes character. And this one was very connected to Stoker's Pass, which I enjoyed. So I gave it three stars, and I hope to read more of this series in the future. And then the book that sort of taught, took me out of my reading slump a little bit was The Drowning Summer by Christina Lynn Herman. This is the same author that wrote um, The Devouring Grey, which I loved. I would say this is more of a thriller, less fantasy but they do have some like magical witchy elements to it. Um, so you follow these two characters and this one is also LGBTQ+. I forgot to mention that. Um, it is. So that's good. Um, but you follow these two characters and they, one of the characters is, can see the dead or she's supposed to see her dad. Her dad and her, 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 I think it's her, her uncle and her mom can talk to the dead. Um, and then the other character is, um, Evelyn and her dad has been accused of the murder of three teens back in the day um, and when Evelyn decides to summon the dead again some things get put into motion and these girls have to sort of have an uneasy alliance to sort of let these ghosts rest and figure out what happened to these teens so many years ago. It was a really quick read. I don't think it was as captivating as The, Dow the Devouring Grey. I love the romance and it. it was definitely a second chance romance and also there was a lot of love to hate, like hate to more elements to the story. Um, I enjoyed the world building. I thought the characters were fun. I think that they were both very interesting. The mystery just wasn't as compelling as I wanted it to be, but it was set on Long Island, which was interesting, and the reason for the haunting was very interesting, and it is set on Long Island as well, so I just like that. But yeah, I gave it like four stars. It was a fun read, and I want to check out her joint book with Amanda Foodie, but this was an okay read, and it definitely helped me get out of my reading slump, um, and I'm happy that I picked it up. Um, and then the next audiobook that I picked up was The Shadow Crosser, which is the final book in the Sh Storm Runner series by J.C. Cervantes, and here is a photo. I will say, I struggled a little bit with this audiobook, but I will say I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars. It just was, it was an interesting read. A little bit different from the other series, and I think it also worked to set up the next series that she's coming out with this year. I liked it. I like Zayn as the main character. I think he's fun. I think there's a lot of elements to the story that is a quick read. Again, wrapping up a series is always very, very hard, but I think she did a good job, and it was captivating. It, I felt like there was a lot of new people in this story, so for me as listening, I felt like I was a little bit lost in the details, but I enjoyed it, and I will definitely check out the sequel series, and I just love Zane. He's like probably 
one of my top favorite characters in the Rick Riordan verse. I'm thinking of doing a, a guide to Rick Riordan Presents. If you guys are interested in seeing that, comment below and I will try to film that in November. But yeah, it was a three star read and I was happy to wrap up another series because I also wrapped up, um, I'm, I'm, I also wrapped up The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which I'm going to talk about next. This was a five star read for me. I love this book. I love, I've read everything that Jennifer Lynn's Barn has written that is contemporary and like thrillery. I love this book. This is the final book in the Inheritance Game series. This book was really, really good. I, I don't want to talk too much spoilers, but I felt like the pacing was great. I felt like all the reveals were perfect. I always say with Jennifer Lynn Barnes' book, you really need to read it in like quick succession because the reveals just are more power punched. And I think the story is just better when you read it quickly, but I loved it. I think the end game for the romance, the end game for everything was just really, really important, and I really loved it. I'm excited to see what she's working on next. She hasn't announced anything yet. I will definitely be keeping a nose out, but yeah, definitely worth the read, and probably one of my only five-star reads of the month in September, so, but definitely one of my first reads I read, actually, for this, this is the first book I read in the month. I just want to chat about it, but definitely a strong read for sure. A lot of the books I read in the month of September were middle grade because it was something quick and this was another one that I picked up but this was Theo Tan and the Fox Spirit by Jesse Q. Sutanto which is the same author that wrote the Dial A for Auntie series and I really really enjoyed it. It was one of those books that just put a smile on my face. It was another mythology themed story. So I really loved it. Um, I thought this book was very interesting because like another book I'm going to talk about later in the month, there was like a non-human main character. Um, but yeah, so here's a picture of it and then we're going to chat about it. Overall, I gave this book like four stars for review. I thought it was great, but you basically follow this main character, Theo Tan, and he is a, he's a Chinese American student, and he doesn't really feel that connected to his past. His brother, um, Kai, has a fox spirit, and they're very, very close, and he sort of blames the fox spirit for he and his brother not being that close, but when his brother dies unexpectedly, he is forced to become partnered with Kai, the fox spirit, and things don't exactly go according to plan when they start to uncover that Kai's death may not have been due to a car accident. So he sort of gets sucked off to this myth myth mythology themed boarding school where he has to sort of partner with Kai to solve some several problems, but including what happened to his brother. And guys, it was a great read. I, I love it. This book does have a lot of grief elements embedded in it because of Kai's death. But I also just love the like the the vast point of view difference between Theo and Kai, and I just loved it. I flew through it. It was a quick read. I hope we get book two because it left off on a pretty good cliffhanger. And I think that just the dynamics between these two characters working together really changed throughout the book. I gave it four stars, and I would definitely read more by this author. I want to go back and read her YA stuff. It's the only stuff I haven't read. But her middle grade and adult books, two thumbs up for me, um, for sure. This was a random pick I picked up. I just needed something quick to listen to when I was slowly getting out of my reading slump, and I wound up picking up the Tanglewood Tea Shop. It is, I wouldn't call it a cozy mystery. I really wouldn't call it, like, a romance even. It was just sort of, like, women's fiction set in a small English town. I'll, I'll be honest, it sort of gave me Legends and Latte vibes because it was very, like, low stakes. Um, but it was a fun read. It reminded me sort of like watching a Hallmark movie just without the romance. So here's the photo. And this book was just a fun time. Follows this main character. Her aunt, I think, died and left her a bunch of money, and she wound up using that money to go to a different English small town and open up a tea shop and the whole book was just her setting up her tea shop. It gave me really lot Legends and Latte vibes but more of like a modern setting. It was fun. It was enjoyable. I gave it three stars. There's two more in the series. I'll probably read them eventually 
it was a fun time. It didn't wow me. It didn't walk my socks off. There was maybe the potentiality of a romance. Not the point at all. But it was fun. I liked it. And if you're craving things like low stakes, like Legends and Lattes, maybe check out the series because it was very, very low stakes. But just a fun listen. So that was good. And then the last physical thing that I read for the month, well, this half of the month, was Payback's a Witch by Lana Harper. This is another LGBTQ plus story. This came out two years ago, I think. But this follows a main character named Emmy, and she has to go back to her small town to kind of preside over a magical competition. And she and a couple of her best friends are teaming up to get revenge on her ex-boyfriend that sort of drove her out of town and a romance ensues. It was a fun read. This is the same author that wrote Wicked as a Wildfire and I felt like the book read a little bit more YA to me for some elements. Like the magical competition was unique and different. I enjoyed it. Um, the romance was fun. I want to read the other books in the series. There's like two other other ones out. But it was a fun time. I gave it four stars. And this is sort of when my reading changed a bit. And I sort of just stopped being in a slump, which was really nice. So you guys will see all those books in my next video, which I will probably post probably Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments what are some books you loved. Um, for me, if I had to choose one, I would say my favorite book was finally The Final Gambit of this whole month. I think it was the strongest. I read it before. I was slumpy. Definitely my favorite my weakest was probably The Drowning Summer, if I had to choose a weakest. But I also had quite a few DNFs that I'm just not going to count because I read like 20 pages and was just super dis disinterested. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts. Let me know in the comments what are some September books you tackled. And I'll talk to you guys for my next video. Bye, friends.